Shalom, MGTOW, Islam, MGTOW, Peace, MGTOW. It's been a while since I've actually done a video about we men and women. And today, I'm actually going to develop into the black male-female relationship. And this may very well apply to the so-called white couples as well. But one of the things that I want to point out is that there is an influxion of black, or so, should I say so-called black women. There's no such thing as black. We're actually different shades of brown. But there's an influxion. For the sake of the conversation, I'll use that misnomer, black. There's an inflection of black women that's going to college um, far more than the so-called black man. And they're, you know, flooding the job market in comparison to the so-called black man. Now, the media essentially has been the educator, or should I say miseducator, of the vast majority of black women. Now, despite the fact that these women are actually going into colleges and they're getting the jobs, what they do not realize is that they're not being properly educated. They're being miseducated. In fact, most of the things that they get, uh, you know, ascertain with their degrees besides math, reading, and you know, perhaps some of the social sciences is meaningless in real life. And what I mean by that is that they're not taught to actually go out and learn how to make the money work for them. They're taught to go out and to, you know, make money but they're not taught to make the money work for them because they're not being properly educated. And therefore they end up with, you know, some with a substantial amount of fiat in the bank account, but they end up miserable, depressed, and most of all, angry. Many are apprehensive because once they get up in age, once they approach their late 30s or early 40s, the woman begin to realize that she may end up single for the remainder of her life. And at such point, her beauty will actually start to deteriorate. So now, all of the men that she's previously um, refused to go into a relationship with when she was younger, she may reconsider those. But the problem with that is that unless the man is like weak, has low self-esteem, and he's desperate, um, you know, definitely not an alpha male. The man is no longer interested because men primarily pick women that could actually reproduce for him, that could reproduce his seed. And some of the women, by the time that they've actually, um, you know, increased in age, their biological clock has begun turning so much that they may no longer be able to produce the eggs that is actually required to get pregnant. Or the walls of the uterus may be actually too weak to even actually hold the baby be too, because of her birth control that the system is actually taught her to use and is literally weakening the walls of a uterus. But my point being is that once she gets up in age, she starts to realize that, hey, I may be out here without a man. And despite, despite the education, um, their bank account, they do need a man. And some of them, you know, they may not be consciously aware, but subconsciously, this is actually displayed, displayed by the use of their vibrators and so on and so forth.
or, you know, they go and get a female that straps on a fake penis, if you will, and be treated like a man. And they do not realize that this is a, an illness, a mental illness that the society, that the current society has actually taught them is actually okay. It's nothing wrong with it. In fact, it's actually being promoted. So politics has actually affected your relationships. But primarily, Mattel, what I want to talk about, you know, me, Tyler Doc, a spokesman for men. I essentially came out with this channel because there is no forum for actually so-called black men or men in general to come to to actually express what's going on in their lives. There's various platforms for women to actually go to and discuss what's going on in relationships and the event and they have these support groups they have these shelters for women and children but there is no support system for the man so i reserve a right to have this platform for men because the more and more guys that i actually talk to i realize that men are actually in a dire need to have an outlet. So there's an inflection of suicide amongst men. Now, as far as the so-called black male female relationships are concerned, feminism has been a, a, a primary factor in the destruction of the so-called black family. Feminism has actually taught the so-called black woman to detest the so-called black man like a germ, like an HIV plague, like a sickness. Prior to the feminist movement the black family was much stronger the so-called black woman was out there supporting her man she was standing by her man but now with the rise of feminism and what is known as this actually studio um, science of actually being a diva, the black family has been systematically destroyed. And this is not by chance. You have spiritual wickedness in high places that are actually sitting behind desks and actually, you know, pushing these mental buttons that's actually provoking the destruction of the so-called black family. There's a hidden hand that's literally orchestrating the destruction of the so-called black family. And the problem is many of you don't see any of this. You don't see any of this because you're blinded by fiat currency. You're blinded by, oh, I'm going to get a nice home. Um, I can live like I want to. Um, I don't need a man. That's what's actually being pushed, the propaganda of you not needing a man. And with the propaganda of not needing a man, you was unaware that not needing a man would actually result in you. And your young daughters becoming lesbians. You didn't realize that not meaning a man would actually resort in your young boys becoming effeminized. That they would actually be raised from a woman's perspective. Now, there's some women that try their best with these young boys. And you know, they may even go to college and become college to be educated, but you did not realize 
your theory of following this political structure not needing a man would actually result in these boys being effeminized and raised to be very bitchy. And so in turn, what actually happens is that not needing a man, these boys grow up to be men that act and conduct themselves like women. So they're very argumentative. They don't stay on their center like a man. They like to argue like a woman. Why? Because mom did it. They don't know how to properly you know, conduct themselves with women. Why? Because they are taught by their moms. Why? Because the male figures have been chased out of the homes. And to advocate this, the system, you know, initially taught that, well, if you want to be on public assistance, then the man cannot be in the home. The man has to go then we could actually give you public assistance. This is systematically destroys the family unit. And the family unit is essentially the backbone of the nation. So here you have a family structure that's raised by a single parent, primarily a so-called black woman that's angry angry because her mouth because she has not been taught by her mother to respect a man she chased her man out of the home and into the arms of someone else and then she say well he's guilty he's no good he's a no good dog but her mouth was so devastating that the man had to leave because he didn't want to put his hands on her or injured her so he left so he went not necessarily because he didn't feel like his wife was actually still beautiful or something like that he went because he was in search of peace and contentment of mind and sisters unless you could bring a man peace and contentment of mind you're, you're, you're not you're never going to have a good relationship with a male but you've been taught by the system you don't need a man. But they didn't tell you not needing a man would result into your boys being homosexuals, your daughters being lesbians, and, and, and so on and so forth. You didn't know that not being a man would, you know, we would see like this influx of crime, of black boys going to jail. You know, in and out of the jails, you know, that not needing a man would result in black females outnumbering black males five to one. So, and looking at the results of the children, it is evident that you are in desperate need of a man. You are in desperate need. Of a man. Now I want you to think. Don't get emotional. And I, I know it's exceedingly difficult not to be emotional. Hey, let's pause for a second. I want you to count backwards from five, four, three, two, one. Now you just calm the heck down and contain your emotions because you need this. Now I know these are some cold cuts, but you need to eat it. What the hell you mean? You don't need a man. A man can't tell me nothing. I'm self-sufficient. I could do for myself. So the same women that say that they did not need a man, look at the results. The results are this, that the women that did not need a man, quote, unquote, are the same women that raise these black single male children that's disrespectful to women, that don't know how to treat women, that's abusive, that call their women bitches and whores and so on and so forth. See, 
this is the consequences of you, sister, saying, I don't need a man. You can raise a male child. You could actually even get him to go to college, but you cannot teach him to be a man. And because you have actually devoted all of your time on your daughters, all of your concentration on your daughters, your boys has actually been improperly reared. So you've actually fulfilled the scriptures about menstruous women producing monsters. What's a menstruous woman, first of all? When we, we look at the scriptures, it says menstruous women will produce monsters. Well, the scriptures say when a woman is on her menstrual, many of you may be refer to it as a cycle or her period period she's considered to be unclean unclean so what the scripture is saying through the spirit is that unclean women that means your mind is unclean sister your, your mind is not right so the scripture is saying unclean women unclean women women that saying I don't need a man man can't tell me nothing and so on and so forth the scripture is saying that these unclean women will bring forth children that's like monster what is a monster a monster he'll go out and he'll rob the er the, the elderly think nothing of it that's a monster a monster is a female that'll go out and sleep with this male, that male, so on and so forth, a young female, and pass around all sorts of diseases, and she even conduct herself like a male figure. She put on a masculine spirit. See, this is all Bible prophecy. And sadly enough, you don't see any of this. Many of you do not see any of this because you have allowed the enemy to control your mind. Now, you may not be able to receive this coming from me, another male, because when you look at me, many of you, when you look at Taza Doc, your mind has been so destroyed that when you look at me, you see hate. You see, you know, what you saw in that man that you're no longer with. You see something that you hate. So the scripture saying second edges five and eight, there shall be a confusion also among many places. The earth is confused. You got men thinking that they're women and women thinking that they're men. And then if you speak out against it, they want to flag your YouTube channel. Why? For speaking with the heavenly fall the God has ordered and condemned. But I'm wrong. If I speak out against a homosexual a lesbian, how in the heck can America be a Christian country doing? I need you to think. I need you to think. There shall be a confusion also in many places, and a fire shall be offset out again, and wild beasts shall change their place. These wild beasts that they're talking about is these wild children because they're like beasts. Many of these black youth are like beasts in human form. They go out to commit murder. They rob people and the mom says, oh, that's my son. My son wasn't doing like that. He was acting without of himself. No, your son is wicked as hell. Your son is wicked as hell because you, you raised him to be wicked, wicked because a man wasn't there to properly direct them. And then sometime that the man is there trying to raise the boy correctly, the mom gets in the way with her damn mouth and she prevent that man from raising that boy how he should have been raised. And the boy, the man's trying to save his life. The same thing with the daughters. The man try to be a little stern on her and the mom gets in the way. And she ruins that relationship, not knowing that she's destroying the future of that male and female child. 
Second Idris 5 verse 8. And there shall be a confusion also in many places, and the fire shall be offset out again, and wild beasts shall change their places, and menstruous women shall bring forth monsters. Unclean women. Because when a woman is on her menstrual, the scriptures tells you she's not supposed to have sex. Why? Because she's unclean. So the scriptures is telling us unclean women. Meaning your mind is unclean, sis. Why is your mind unclean? Because you are allowing the enemy to control your mind. You are allowing the devil to control your mind. She'll bring forth monsters so your children are like monsters. Look at these boys out here in skinny jeans. Man, what kind of damn spirit is it that a damn man is like wiggling to put his damn jeans on? Who, who, who the hell? Who, who, what kind of damn spirit is that you all wiggling like a female to get in your damn jeans? That spirit is off. So, women, you have fell. And then when someone with my, you know, coppered color skin comes forth and say, sisters, you're off. You hate me. You hate me right now. Why? Because I'm giving you truth. Because I'm giving you right knowledge and you cannot digest it. Prior to the feminist movement, the so-called black woman was standing by her man talking about revolution. After the feminist movement, look what we got now. We got the Oprah Winfrey's that's promoting feminism. That's promoting feminism. That's promoting the destruction of the black family. Why? Because she has a covenant with Satan. All of these women that's telling you sisters out here, okay, all you single ladies, all you single ladies, it's going to bring you nothing but misery and all in the end. You're going to find out. And some of these women, when they get older, they end up hating men. You hate your so-called black man. You hate him like a plague. But the reason that many of the men are going is Bible prophecy. Sirach, which is the book of Ecclesiasticus in the Holy Apocrypha, the 25th chapter, verse 16 says, I had rather dwell with a lion and a dragon than to keep house with a wicked woman. Some of you women, you, you break up with your husband, you go out, you sleep with another man, have sex with him, which is committing adultery for which the most high said the punishment is death. And you come back like nothing has ever happened. You're a whore. According to the scriptures, you are a hoe and you're a defile. And he should never take you back. But you think you escape judgment because your husband may not have seen you? Guess what? God is going to judge you. God is going to get you through your children, maybe through your mother, or he may get you. But you will not go unpunished. The wicked shall not go unpunished. Verse 17 said, the wickedness of a woman changeth the, her face and drinketh, darkeneth her countenance like sackcloth. Her husband shall sit among his neighbors, and when he heareth it, he shall sigh bitterly. He hearing all these bad things about his woman, his wife. She out there whoring in the damn street. She keep leaving home and then coming back, promising him, oh, I'll, baby, I'll never leave again. Just forgive me. And the man wanting to make it work, he believes her, but she does it again and does it again. Why? Because you're sick. You're sick, sister. Verse 19, Ecclesiasticus 25 and 19 says, All wickedness, all wickedness is but little to the wickedness of a woman. All wickedness. Now, why did, a, why did God put this in the Bible, sister? This should tell you something. Get your mind right, queen. You, you, you're going around with these titles, queen, princess, um, um, empress. How are you going to be that? If you are a hoe, you're calling yourself a diva. Oh, you don't need a man, but look at the consequences of you not needing a man. Look what it has done to your family. Sisters, if you do not change your thinking, you are finished. Many of you do not want to submit. Submission essentially means agreement. Like it or not, you are under your man. And all this nonsense that you're being out there misled um, by Egyptologists and all of these people telling you that, oh yeah, the black woman is God. That is a lie. That is a lie. 
And this is why you are unhappy. This is why you are sad. And this is why many of you have become lesbians and you're lonely. You're into all kind of sexual wickedness. You're having threesomes. You're sleeping with this man and that man and that man. And each time that you sleep with a man, his sperm is going to your brain. And this is why you're bugged out of your damn mind and you're a wild woman. Man can't tell you nothing. Why? Because you have demons on you. And I know this is hurt. This is a tough pill to swallow, but you need to eat. You need to eat. You need to eat this pill. Scriptures say in Ecclesiastes 25 and 13, give me any plague, but the plague of the heart and any wickedness, but the wickedness of a woman. Why? Because when a woman becomes wicked, she's exceedingly wicked. And this is not female bashing. I'm giving you the word of the most high. And this is where many of you, you don't really want to come into this book. And many of you, you claim to be in the truth. You won't cover your head like you're supposed to be covered. You're still walking around with jeans and say, oh, God knows what's in my heart. Yeah, you, you, he's going to know. You're going to know what's in the most high's heart when he judge you behind. Through judgment. When you get punished. When you burn with fire. Because some of you think this is a joke. You, you think being a, a Hebrew Israelite is some damn, you know, game that you could just do what you want to do and be lukewarm. But Yahweh said, if you're lukewarm, you're going to be spirit out of the mouth. You're not going to make it into the glorious kingdom. You're going to be punished. And all you sisters out here that, you know, you, you marry and, you know, since most divorces, 80% of divorces are actually instituted by women. All of you sisters, once you, if you leave your husband, you're not supposed to be laying down and having sex with another man, according to the Most High, according to the Bible. And not neither one of you are going to hear to that. And so the Most High is going to judge your mind and you're going to be destroyed. Now, I know you think this is a game. Right, let, let me get that in scripture. Book of Romans 7, chapter verse 2. For the woman which hath ha have a husband is bound by the Lord to her husband as long as he liveth. If the husband be dead, she is loose from that law of her husband. So even if you leave and go back to your mother's house, your father's house, you're not supposed to be talking to another damn man on the phone. You're not supposed to be having sex with another man. You ought to remain celibate. That's the law. So then if while her husband liveth, she be married to another man, she shall be called an adulteress. Any, in other words, you are a hoe. But if her husband be dead, she be free from that law so that she is no adulteresses, though she be married to another man. Now, some of you, 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 you try and like, you know, flip that around. Oh, I know the most high uh, don't want, you know, he's not going to keep this over me. No, you're, you're going to be judged because you're wicked. You try and twist the scripture. The scripture is crystal clear, verbatim. But you try and twist, twist the scriptures to justify it and make it fit you. But you're going to be judged for that. Understand that. Understand that. Let's get it again. Let, let's get 2 Corinthians. Um, verse 39. I'm, I'm sorry, Salakia. 1 Corinthians, the 7th chapter, verse 39. The wife is bound by the law as long as her husband liveth. But if her husband be dead, she is at liberty be, to be married to whom she will. Only in the Lord. So that's do Yahweh Shah. Let's get um, 1 Corinthians, the seventh chapter. We're going to go to verse 2. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man has his own wife and let every woman her own husband. You see that? So what, what you mean, says she's supposed to be alone? Part of your salvation comes through you actually having children. And you can't have no children being out here, you know, conducting yourself like a lesbo with another woman. That's sexual wickedness, according to the Bible. Now, you can get mad all you want to, but I'm giving you truth. I'm trying to save your soul. And I don't believe in religion. This has nothing to do with religion. This is the most high. So the word of the most high is going to go forth. Don't matter who trying to censor it, whether you listen to this or not. Or you receive this or not, you're going to take some of this vibration back with you. You're going to think. So get your minds right, King.
Get your mind right, queen. And all you men that's being weak, sissy, punctified um, to these women, you bowing down and you're doing what they're saying. I don't have any respect for you. And the most high can't use a man like you. You need to man up, gird up thy loins, show thyself to be a man. Be strong, brother. And sister, you're going to have to learn to humble yourself. Point blank, period. Learn to humble yourself. Because a real masculine man like me ain't bowing down to no woman. Now, I'm not a dictator, but I'm a real alpha male and I'm trying to give brothers the game according to the most high. So man up and get your mind right, brother. This is Taja Doc, your brother, coming at to you, McTow. And if these women don't want to be um, submissive, then go your own way, man. Go your own way. You, you, The most high can't deal with you if you're going to be weak to a woman. Again, I'm not female bashing because now I'm about to speak about some of the things that the brothers need to fix as well. But the system is highly in favor of the women. I've been in and out of these court systems and I see men get railroaded day after day after day after day. The system has a secret relationship with the female in order to extract as much money as they can from the male. The male image is actually being destroyed and feminism is behind it. And all of you so-called black women that's caught up into this feminism, get your mind right, queen. I'm trying to save you. I'm trying to save your soul. I'm trying to save your children. I'm trying to save your relationships. You need to humble yourself and submit to your covering. That's crystal clear. You're not supposed to be ruling over your husband if you got a weak man. Get your mind right. Shalom, brothers and sisters. Once again, my name is Brother Zadok. And today's topic is going to be on spiritual wickedness. And this, this is pertaining to all sorts of spirits that's in the world. But it's also attaining to the brethren and sisters. This also pertains to Israelites because many of our people have all sorts of spirits on them out here. I mean, we got um, these brothers out here claiming to be righteous, considering themselves priests, yet disrespecting our sisters. Now, make no mistake about it. There's a lot of women out here that's messed up. There's many of our sisters out here that's messed up. And there's plenty of other men out here that's messed up. But as a, as a matter of fact, to be right and exact, that's why I thought it was essentially important that we address this topic about all of this, these, these um, spiritual wickedness, these evil spirits that's going around our head. Because you never know in this day and age, you don't know what kind of spirit might be on a person. He might, a spirit could come into a person, um, possess that person. Um, for a period of time and cause him to commit some type of act of wickedness and then leave him and he's baffled as to why he or she may have done it and some of these spirits they, they has gotten uh, come upon our people and they have stayed with them and I mean the person might have been very knowledgeable they might recite scriptures um, they may be very well versed in scriptures but the Pharisees was very well versed in scriptures but it wasn't written in the heart they wasn't coming with that true spirit. They rejected Yahweh Shah. And any of you men out here that's supposed to be, be leaders, I challenge you to be better leaders. If, you, if you're going to lead our um, people, you're going to call yourselves priests, all these titles that you put upon yourself, but you're coming in the spirit of demons. And then you want to condemn Esau. No. Many of us are responsible for the condition that we have remained in. Because why? We don't want to keep God's laws. If you are disrespecting and denouncing our sisters, you're not keeping God's law. I said it before and I'll reiterate it. When Mary Magdalene, a lady that was actually caught in the act of adultery, sinned. How did Yahweh Shai deal with that woman? Did he say, oh, you cut, you black bee, um, you're going to be condemned and go to hell? No, brothers and sisters, that's the wrong spirit. 
and to all of you other Israelites out here, this is how you can discern someone that's in the true spirit of Christ than someone that's out here just reading, studying, and memorizing scriptures. Because a man in the true spirit of Christ is what? Going to emulate Christ. You're going to see Christ in him. And you can't show me anywhere in the scripture where Yahweh Shah is seen disrespecting our women and our nation, despite her condition. So as I was about to previously state, how did he deal with Mary Magdalene when she was actually caught in the act of adultery and they was about to stone her to death? Which is the punishment. Don't, um, I don't... I don't want to be misunderstood here. That is the punishment. But the difference between the Old Covenant, the Old Testaments, and the New Testaments is mercy. That's where the mercy of Christ comes in. So even those brothers and sisters have a chance to repent. Even those brothers and sisters have a chance to repent. So Christ said, let he who without sin cast the first stone. And I say to you, Israelites, you Israelite brothers out here that's condemning our sisters without trying to suggest a better way of trying to talk to her in a different spirit. She has a chance to repent. And all of you sisters that's condemning the brothers, they have a chance to repent. Because sisters, many of you are guilty of this as well. But I, I in particularly want to deal, I want to deal with both, but we need to deal with the men because they are supposed to be the leaders. But how have we let? We're abusive. Our, our mouth, someone's, we just can't control our mouth. We see a lot of things that we're um, sorry for. We cheat. We steal. We lie. None of this is going to inherit the kingdom of heaven. I don't care how well you know the scriptures. You can know the scriptures very well, brothers and sisters. Unless you are applying it to your lives and living it daily, it all comes to naught. So I want to deal with this spiritual wickedness. And as I um, was stating here, Christ told Mary Magdalene, Go your way and sin no more. So those brothers and sisters that has been living lives of sin have the opportunity to repent under the new covenant and you need to keep that in mind all of you that's out here um, denouncing or hating on me because I'm saying hey brother you're coming in the wrong spirit you shouldn't be putting out videos calling out sisters the b-word and whores and sluts despite her condition this, yeah, sure, there's sisters out here that's doing many things that they shouldn't be doing. But we are supposed to be the examples. We are supposed to challenge them to change. We can't force them or compel them to change. But we can suggest. And when we make those suggestions, we have to come in the right spirit. So I want to deal with this spiritual wickedness. Amongst the brethren and sisters of Israel, you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Now the scriptures tells us that you can determine what a person, uh, whether or not they are an Israelite. Because there's a lot of confusion as to who's Israel. You know there's a lot of people from Africa that say, well I'm Israelite too. It is not for us to say, no you're not an Israelite, you're a Hamite. Because the scriptures tells us the spirit will bear witness who's Ezra. Let's get that. The book of Romans, the 8th chapter, verse 16. The spirit itself bear witness with our spirit that we are the children of Yahweh. But the problem here, brothers and sisters, is that the children of the slaves have been so exposed to ungodliness and wickedness and evil spirits even that spirit of Esau is dwelling in many of you. Your former slave masters, slave masters, is opposed to the Lord's statutes and commandment of God. Everything that God says not to do, it seems like Esau promotes. God says homosexuality is wrong. Now there's states that's pushing 
for gay marriages, lesbian marriages. I mean, this is a wicked society, brothers and sisters, in which we live. I mean, you got counselors, so-called marriage counselors, that people go to, and they suggest that they have an affair, which is adultery. So they would suggest that someone has an affair which is committing adultery, according to the Bible, and should be put to death. I mean, this is the kind of society that Esau has built, has established, a society of wickedness. And it's exactly why Christ said, the prince of this world cometh and have nothing in me. Now, since Esau has been your teacher and your ruler, then you think as your teacher, as the man that have taught you. So you need a revolution, brothers and sisters. You so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native American, you need a revolution. The revolution that I'm talking about is a revolution of your mind. Complete constructive change. I'm going to say that again. You need a revolution of your mind. Complete constructive change. A lot of you brothers out here, oh, Esau, I want to kill him, that white man, that no good dog. He done this, he done that, he done this. I'm ready, I'm ready to sit in war fight now. You ain't going to do nothing. What the heck are you going to do against a man that had this kind of um, military? What are you going to do with your little AK-47, a 9mm? You ain't going to do nothing but be put to death. That's why the scriptures say, wait ye upon me, saith the Lord. You got to wait on Christ. Christ is going to deal with him. The Father raise him up. The Father going to bring him down. That's in Jeremiah. You've read it before. If you know the scriptures. So forget about all this Esau, Esau, Esau. Forget about Esau. The Father raised him up. The Father going to bring him down. So don't be pointing the finger at Esau. You need to handle the Satan of self. Because many of you have demons on you. Many of you Israelites have evil spirits upon you. That's why you're denouncing and degrading your um, brethren and your sisters. And can't get along with your own people. Now you take that and run with that. And I'm giving you love. Don't say I'm hate. I'm giving you love. You want love? I'm giving you love. That'll shame you down and straighten you out. Because that's what the vast majority of our people need. And to, for all of you that's putting out these videos about me, uh, the brother that put out a, you know who you are, I don't have to call your name, that put out a video, and you mispronounced my name, Zadok is the name, how you pronounced it, how you should have pronounced it, but nevertheless, I know what you meant, because I stood in the defense of our sisters, someone has to stand up for, because many of our men are denouncing our women, Yet consider themselves priests and prophets of God. You can hate me. I don't care about you hate me. But Christ said in John 7 and 7, what? The world cannot hate you. For me I hate it. So you don't hurt, hate me. You hate Christ. Because I'm coming in his spirit. I'm telling you, don't deal with your sister like that. That's love. You can like it, understand it, believe it or not. You might not accept it. But I'm going to tell you the truth. And any man that don't honor and respect the wound that bores him, that bore him and brought him into this world, that man is not worthy to be upon this earth. And you will be dealt with. You will be dealt with. Christ is going to deal with you. You don't deserve to be respected. You're going to disrespect her. Huh? How are you going to denounce women, all women? You're gonna, some of you um, idiots, I'm going to call you what you are, idiots, went to the extreme that you say all black women are no good. I mean, that's ridiculous. So what about the wound that bore you? What about your mother? What about your sister? How are you going to call the black woman a bitch and you not be the son of denouncing a whole race of women? That's madness, man. Don't tell me that you're coming with the spirit of Christ. So those brothers that's in the right spirit have to correct you. 
any brother within the sound of my voice that know that I'm telling the truth. You need to stand and rebuke this madness of these brothers out here that's denouncing our sisters. We cannot allow this. We, we cannot allow this in the nation. That's not the spirit of um, God in Christ. That is not the spirit of God in Christ. They're coming with demons. You're not coming to truth. And if you're not coming with the truth, we're going to rebuke you. As it says in the book of Titus 1 and 13, therefore rebuke them sharply. And that's what I'm doing. I'm rebuking you. You need to come back in the right spirit. So let's look at this spiritual wickedness. So I say unto my people, you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, as the Pharaoh owes set in the book of Genesis 41, 38. This is the spirit that we should have. And Pharaoh said unto his servants, Can we find such a one as this, a man to whom the Spirit of God is? How are you going to consider yourself in the Spirit of God denouncing our women, telling them they don't have a chance? When it's written in the scriptures that they can repent. Are you a God above God? I don't think so. Now the Spirit of God dwells in a brother or sisters when they live correctly. When they start keeping the Lord's statutes and commandments. They become filled with the Holy Spirit. So the book of Exodus 35 verse 31 says, And he that hath filled him with the Spirit of God in wisdom and understanding and in knowledge and in all manner of workmanship so the Spirit of God can dwell in us brothers and sisters because if we are to when we become Christ like what spirit did Christ have well he said me and my father are one so he had God's Spirit on him he had the Spirit of God on him And if you're to emulate Christ, and you, you're walking in the light, so you begin to think as God stopped. What kind of thoughts does God have? God starts a godly. So you begin to think like a God, and when you think like a God, you begin to act like God. So the book of Psalms 82 verse 6 says, did I not say that you are God? That's when you're walking in the spirit of truth. You're all God's children of the most high God, Yahweh. That's when you're walking in the spirit of truth. That's when we're walking in the correct spirit. Let this mind in you be let this mind be in you, the same which was in Christ Jesus. Whose mind did Christ have? God's mind. Well, if you have God's mind in you, then what have you become? You become an agent of God. And as a God. That's what Psalms 82 verse 6 is trying to suggest to you. But many of you are not coming in that spirit. Now the spirit of the Heavenly Father definitely comes through Christ. But it can't be found in most of our people today. It can't be found in most of us today. Why? Because you're following false philosophies such as Christianity or Islam or some other philosophy that is paving a straight path to hell. But then there's some that's claiming to be Israelites, but they're still not in the right spirit. You are not following the spirit of your ancestors. You're following a spirit of wickedness and a damn people. You're following that spirit of Esau. You become so angry with Esau that you're taking it out upon your own nation. And half of you don't even understand the psychological effect of what I'm talking about. I mean, some of you are very angry. So you, 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 you're venting your anger on your beautiful black sister. Be the examples. We are supposed to challenge them to change. We can't force them or compel them to change. But. We can suggest. And when we make those suggestions, 
we have to come in the right spirit. So I want to deal with this spiritual wickedness amongst the brethren and sisters of Israel, you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Now the scriptures tells us that you can determine what a person, uh, whether or not they are an Israelite. Because there's a lot of confusion as to who's Israel. You know, there's a lot of people from Africa that say, well, I'm Israelite too. It is not for us to say, no, you're not an Israelite. You're a Hamite. Because the scriptures tells us the spirit will bear witness who's Israel. Let's get that. The book of Romans, the 8th chapter, verse 16. The spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of Yahweh. But the problem here, brothers and sisters, is that the children of the slaves have been so exposed to ungodliness and wickedness and evil spirits. Even that spirit of Esau is dwelling in many of you. Your former slave masters. Shalom, brothers and sisters. Once again, it's the voice of Brother Tazadak. And we can continue on with our topic black male and female relationships. This time we're going to address the black women. The black man has been saying that the problem is the black woman. Oh, she dresses like a whore. She dresses like a slut. Her mouth. She doesn't know how to control her mouth. The black woman has said it's the black man. He's a deadbeat dad. He doesn't like to father his children. Some of them don't want to work. We're going to develop into the scriptures and see through the spirit of the Most High and Yahweh if we can reconcile these differences. Because the Heavenly Father created the black man and black woman to be one, to be a perfect union, to come together as one. The Heavenly Father gave a commandment through the Apostle Paul for the man to love his wife like he loves himself, not to call her to be one of the whore, of the slut. Sure, there's many sisters that's off, brothers, but if you're in the true spirit of your house, your destiny is supposed to be trying to guide her correctly to the truth. If she doesn't accept it, then shalom, have a nice day. But is it really a necessity to degrade them? The earth has been given into the hands of the wicked. The book of Job 9.24 tells us that who's in control of the earth? The so-called white race. You must bear me witness. If you look around, it doesn't take a genius to figure out that the Edomites of the Bible, the so-called Caucasian race, the Caucasian race today, is in, been, has been in control of this earth. And how have their rule been? Has it been wicked? You better believe it. So the scriptures say the earth has been given into the hands of the wicked. Now, there's a hidden hand that has been orchestrating these black male and female problems. They say, you say, pull it, Tazadah. Okay, I will. During the period of slavery, the so-called black man was taught, he was thrown in a cage to mate with a so-called black woman that may have not been of his choice and definitely not of her choice and to produce a baby and then thrown with another one and to mate with that one and to produce a baby and have no responsibility of rearing that family. This didn't go on for a year, a decade, but over 400 years. A habit is a difficult thing to break. Sometimes we need assistance and a Helping us to get rid of bad habits. So these scriptures, brothers and sisters, is your assistance. The word of Yahweh, the one that you call God. This will get you out of this mess that the so-called white race has put us all into. So the scriptures say the earth, the earth has been given into the hands of the wicked. In their Masonic teachings, or in the teachings of the nations of the gods and earth, the 5% nations, they refer to the woman as 
the earth, Mother Earth, because she's the mother of civilization. They refer to the so-called black man as the original man. Who's the original man? The black woman is referred to as the earth. So if the earth has been given into the hands of a wicked ruler, then the earth has been corrupted by this wicked ruler. So it is with our women, sisters. And you need to hear this. Don't get mad. You need to get your behind back into these scriptures. Repent and come back into your God before you perish. So with that said, I'm going to go to the book of Isaiah 13, verse 13. And I hope you write these scriptures down. This time, we're dealing with the sisters. The brothers has had their turn. This time, sisters, we're dealing with you. Then the Most High is going to send Yahweh back to bring about a destruction upon this earth. And all of you that's not in accord with these laws, statutes, and commandments of the Lord thy power, see ya. And I wouldn't want to be ya. Because you're going down right along with the house of Esau and these other heathens. The Heavenly Father is sending Yahweh a black revolutionary messiah, Really here to bring about a destruction upon this earth. The book of Isaiah, the 13th chapter, verse 13. Isaiah 13, verse 13. Therefore, will I shake the heavens. Now, the heavenly father is not talking about his heaven. Heaven here means rulership. He's talking about the rulership of the so called white man. He's going to shake his heavens. His nations, let's read. And the earth shall be removed out of her place. This is talking about that good old thermal nuclear destruction. Esau want to create all of these nuclear weapons. The heavenly father is sending Yahweh to bring about a destruction upon this earth with thermal nuclear destruction. You say, what does that have to do with the black male and female relationship? We're going to get to it. And the earth shall be removed out of her place. And the wrath of the Lord of hosts, the Yahweh and the um, angels, and in the day of his fierce anger, so there's going to be a day of anger of the Lord that he's returning to bring about a destruction upon this earth, meaning this so-called white man's rulership. I know many of you sisters don't like it, because you're working for him in his society and you need him for his jobs. But his society is about to fall. This is falling as a, already. You can see it with the economy, the deficit. Verse 14. And it shall be as the chase rub. It, it, it shall be as the chase rub. What is the it? The so called white man. The Edomites of the Bible. I sure. In Hebrew, I don't want. That's who it's referring to. It shall be as a chase rope. And as a sheep that no man taketh up. They, then shall every man turn to his own people. Now what does that mean? That's referring to you so-called black men and black women that has engaged in these interracial marriages. Letting you know that the heavenly father is going to separate you from them and then make in the last days, in these last days, you're going to be separated from your so-called white lover. You're going to be separated from your so-called Asian lover. You're going to be separated from your so-called Polynesian lover. This is the day of separation. The heavenly father is going to separate you from them. You're going to be separated from them. Now you watch these words come to pass. Let's read on. Then shall every man turn to his own people, because they're going to go back to their own people. Everybody's going to go to their own nation. You so-called blacks and Hispanics and Native Americans are going to have to get together with the nation of Israel. But two-thirds of you, you're not going to join unto us. You're going to perish right along with the heathens. Let's read. And everyone into his own land. So all of these people, all of you that join these people of the nation, when this thing comes down, they're going to start fleeing back to their own land. They're going to flee back to their own land. That's how this thing is going out. So all of you 
that's involved in your interracial marriages, the Heavenly Father is going to send your house shot back and you're going to be separated in these last days. Or are you going to be separated from your uh, leather, your, your leather or your uh, spouse of these other nations? And that's according to the Bible. Now you can like that, understand it, believe it or not, but that's how this thing's going down. And that's an undisputable fact. We're dealing with the facts. The book of Isaiah 30, verse 9. Isaiah 30 and 9. That this is the rebellious people, lion shoot. Now, Two-thirds of our people don't want to hear this. But you need to hear it. This is for the one-third that has not come into the truth that needs to hear it. This is for the one-third that is having a problem in their marriage or with their mate and don't know what to do. But the scriptures say that this is a rebellious people. Talking about you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Lion children. Children that will not hear the law of the Lord. Today, the children are rebellious. You tell your child to be in the house at a certain time. Look, mom, you can't tell me nothing. Because what? 70% of you black females are single. 70%. These are all the curses of the heavenly four that are coming down upon you. And now many of you still don't want to listen. So, 70%. Is headed by a female, and you wonder why your children are so disobedient. Because there's no real father figure in the home. The black child needs both parents. He needs the male and the female. You women, all you independent women, you're going to have to get with a man in the last days, according to these scriptures. And we're going to bring that out, too. We're going to bring that out. Sisters, you say you don't need a man? You're going to have to get with a man in these last days. And sisters... All of you sisters is coming on YouTube, this teaching, it's not a, that's not of God. That's not of the Bible. I'm going to say that again. All of you sisters that's coming on YouTube teaching, and all of you black women that's in these churches, that's at the head of these congregations, you're the devil. That's not the spirit of the Most High in the Hawashah. That's not the spirit. That's not part of the order. You are not to be teaching men. That's all out of order. You're more in compliance with this constitution than you are with the words of the Heavenly Father. How can you say you're of, of the Most High, but you won't keep His commandments? You may not like this, but you need to hear it. You need to listen. You're not, you're not supposed to be teaching the congregation. You're not supposed to be teaching men. You're not supposed to be ahead of men. This has nothing to do with um, male chauvinism. This is the divine order that the Heavenly Father set up. And if you can't comply with that, you have to attest to the fact that you're not in the right spirit. You need to hear this, sisters. You're not in the right spirit. The woman is not to lead the family. The woman is not to lead the family. Esau has set up a system where he's tried to elevate the black man below and the black woman above. That's what he's trying to put into place here. That's what's going on. Let's get this prove all things. The scriptures say in um, 1 Thessalonians 5 and 21 to prove all things. So let's get 1 Timothy 2 verse 12 to prove all things. Book of Timothy, 2nd chapter, verse 12. But I suffer not a woman to teach nor worship authority over the man. So they're going to brother Paul. Now he's giving you a commandment through the Heavenly Father. A lot of you like to tell lies on Paul because you don't understand his teachings. Well, Paul was a fake prophet. Paul was this, he was that. No, you're out of order, woman, and you need to come back into order before the wrath of Yahweh comes down on you. And you're going to perish as well. You can either change or you're going to perish. You can change appearance. The, Yahweh is nothing to be played. It is, it's not, this is not a game. You can't play with Yahweh. You can't bargain with Yahweh. Oh God, if you do this for me, I'll do that for you. I'll stop wearing these uh, pants. No, you can't bargain. This is not no bargain that you can bargain with the Heavenly Four. There ain't going to be none of that. What your behind is going to do is repent and come to this truth of Now I should read on it. 
Let's read on. So you're not to be teaching the men, sisters. Now, I sure Esau, I don't want has taught the black woman that they can lead the man. And many of you do that. And sisters, you're going to have to decide which side you are on. Yahweh, Yahweh Shah, or Satan. Because Satan operates on the left hand side. If you're more in compliance with this man's will than the Most High, then you're not going to, you're not going to be a part of this nation. You're going to perish. You're going to go down right along with these nations. Let's get Isaiah 30, verse 9. Isaiah 30 and 9. Full of all things. That this is a rebellious people, lying children, that will not hear the law of the Lord. So now your women children... And they don't want to hear the word. They don't want to hear the truth. The children out blowing spliff, drinking Hennessy, Alize, pulling stick ups, their stick up chains. They're joining all these gangs. Wait, where's the man? Oh, he's gone. He's gone. He's in prison. He's in jail. He's doing a bed. He's over there with this woman. Confusions. All out of order. The black family's out of order. The man's gone. For any organization to properly perform, there has to be a leadership. And Yahweh made that headship the man. So men, I challenge you to assume your responsibilities and undo our wrongs and make it right. Women, I challenge you to control your mouth. Sisters, the Heavenly Father say, man, you should not be a striker. You should not beat your wives. No man should beat a woman. I'm going to say that again. No man should be the woman. No man should be the woman. But sisters, sometimes your mouth is so devastating that the poor man doesn't know what to do. He says, i got to get the hell away from this woman before I kill her. Because sisters, you have a problem with controlling your mouth. You have diarrhea of the mouth. Not all of you, but the vast majority of you are out of control. You're in compliance with this system. This system. Now I know you don't want to hear this, but you need to listen. In order for you to properly handle your man, you have to be a smart, a small psychologist, psychiatrist. Man comes home from work. You might be working too, sisters. How do you treat him? How do you treat him? Do you greet him at the door for kiss? So honey, how how was your how was your day? And the man might hurt a little. It was rough. It was rough. Then you get all blown out of proportion. This nigga come ahead with an attitude with me like that. No, sister. You got to know how to deal with his head. You know how it is when you go on your um, computer, the hard drive? First, you got to see what's on the screen. You got to learn how to deal with his head. He might grunt a little bit. You got to know how to deal with his mind. You got to know how to um, exercise subtleties. You're much more subtle than him, sister. So you got to learn how to deal with his head. Because when we come in from this world that this man, white man has created, I mean, our heads are messed up. And even if you ha haven't been out into the world, this man has created a world that's wicked as hell. Now let's continue on with the words of the Most High. So a woman should not teach the congregation. Let's go back to 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy. 2 and 11. So women should not be teaching the congregation. All of you sisters that's coming on YouTube and teaching, teaching men, they're out of order. That's against the scriptures. That's against the scriptures, and we're going to prove it. And once you know the truth, and you still continue to do that, guess what? You're sinning. When you will enter the kingdom of the heavenly father, Many of you have that rebellious spirit. You're not going to be able to discontinue from that. First Timothy 2 and 11. Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. Sisters, you are to be taught by your husbands. But what if my husband don't know the truth? Well, you are to listen to the elders in the congregation. If you're not in the congregation, you can be taught the truth. 
by another sister. But she's not out. She's not supposed to be out teaching even a congregation of women. You could learn a couple of women, teach them here and there. But if you want to obey these law statutes and commandments, you must do what is ordered by your hour. Let's get the book of Ezekiel 34, verse 30. Ezekiel 34, verse 30. So sisters, you're not out to be teaching uh, men because it's out of the order of the laws of the heavenly Father. That's not part of the order. Ezekiel 34, verse 30. Thus shall they know that I, the Lord, their God, am with them, and that they, that they even, the house of Israel, are my people, saith the Lord God. So we are the people of the heavenly form. We are the people of the Most High. Verse 31. And ye my flock, the flock of my pasture, are men. Let me read that part again. Verse 31. And ye, the flock of my, and ye, my flock, the flock of my pasture, are men. So the heavenly father, sisters, is letting you know right there who is supposed to be teaching this nation. The men. The men is supposed to be teaching this nation. This doesn't mean you can't teach at all. You can't teach some sisters one on one. You can't teach children. But you're not to be teaching men. That's not part of the order. It's not part of the order, sisters. Let's go back to 1 Timothy 2 and 12. We're going to get some understanding here. We're going to get this understanding. 1 Timothy 2, verse 12. But I suffer not a woman to teach nor usher authority over the man, but to be in sight. So sisters, and not to be teaching the brothers. Don't get angry. Get in accordance with the scriptures. Now a lot of our people have demons on them. I'm going to get to that. Let's get the book of Titus 2 verse. Let's get the book of Titus. The second chapter verse 3. Titus 2 and 3. The aged woman, likewise. Now the Heavenly Father is getting on you older women. Because a lot of you older women, you're the ones that keep the gossip going. Oh, did you hear what so-and-so did? A lot of these old women just sit up and they chew their tobaccos or whatever once they've gotten to a certain age and they just keep gossip going throughout the projects. Throughout the community. She got a little wine bottle there and she just keeps gossip going back and forth. And she's spreading gossip and she's backbutting. And then she got these young women out here fighting in the streets from the gossip that she's done. So the scriptures say, Titus 2 and 3, the aged women, the aged women likewise, that they be in behavior as become of holiness. So you're supposed to be holy, something not mixed, diluted, or tampered with. Not false accusers, lying, accusing people falsely. Not giving to too much wine, not drinking, drunk, falling all over the place. Teachers of good things, verse 4, that they may teach the young women. So you can teach, sisters, you can teach that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children. So you're not to be telling, oh yeah, girl, I'll get rid of him. Sisters, it needs to stop. But it needs to stop now. It might sound funny, but this is not a joke and matter because our nation is being destroyed. Our nation is being destroyed. The black man is at odds with the black woman and it needs to stop. It is essentially important that we discontinue from this madness and come to the truth. <coughs> Excuse me. And I'll show you the problem. A lot of our people have demons on them. A lot of you women have evil spirits, unclean spirits on you. A lot of you men too. But not this time, we're dealing with the women. We're dealing with the women. The book of Isaiah 60, verse 1. 
Arise, shine, for thou light is come. What is your light? Yahweh shine. And he sent his prophets to teach this truth, which are men. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Verse 2. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth. Darkness is all of this wickedness, same-sex marriages. I mean, you got the so-called white man that's pushing for gay marriages. Now you got men marrying men and women marrying women. You got abortions. You got a murder that's going to wreck it. You got all of these different understandings. People worshiping idols, bound down to idols. It's darkness. You got people going to psychic hotlines. It's wickedness. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. So our people are covered in ignorance, evil spirits, gross darkness. What happens in darkness? Wickedness. All forms of wicked practices. You got black men and black women. You got black men that's married, and they go out, and they're homosexuals, and they come back home to their wives and give them a damn disease. You got black women that participate in orgies. You, you got black women that's posing on YouTube as Israelites, and they are in compliance with white. They're having orgies for white men and, and white women. This is madness and it's wickedness. But the Heavenly Father has given some of us the ability to expose you and to look into your personal lives. Now, you don't know what you're dealing with, woman. Because some of us are world first in these computers. You see, some of us can look at you closer than you think we can. Now, let's read on. And you, you know who you are. You know who you are. You know that I'm talking to you. you so you better check yourself and clean yourself up. Or you will be exposed. I'll still call it names. Let's continue on with the word of the Most High. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and the glory shall be seen upon thee. So gross darkness. Our people are under a wicked rule. This earth is covered with wickedness. Iniquities. All forms of perverseness. Let's get the book of Second Idris. Go over to the Apocalypse. Let's get Second Idris 5, verse 1 through 3. Second Idris, the fifth chapter, verse 1. Nevertheless, as concerning the tokens, behold, the days shall come that they which dwell upon the earth shall be taken in great number. And the way of truth shall be hidden. Many of you has been taken with this false philosophy of Christianity. You know, this day of madness. You want to call yourself Muslims. You want to call yourself Seventh-day Adventists. You want to call yourself Jehovah Wickedness. You want to call yourself Baptist. And all of these other different understandings. And some of you um, are taking on these uh, Democratic, Republicans, Liberals. None of this is up. Yahweh. You're taking counsel, but it's not of the Most High. You're covering with a covering, but it's not of the spirit of Yahweh. Shut. Let's read. Nevertheless, as concerning the tokens, behold, the day shall come that they which dwell upon the earth, who dwell upon the earth, nations, shall be taken in great numbers, and the way of truth shall be hidden. And the land shall be barren of faith. So you've got all of these kind of different understandings. But iniquities shall be increased above that which now thou seest, or that thou hast heard long ago. So now we have all forms of wickedness. I mean, Sodom and Gomorrah was bad. But this, this society is taking a way hell of a far past Sodom and Gomorrah. Let's get the book of Romans 10 and 17. So wickedness has covered the face of the earth. Book of Romans, 10th chapter, verse 17. Romans 10 and 17. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of Yahweh. So in order for you to have faith, you have to hear this word. And when you hear it, you must react. Something should touch your spirit. And make you want to alter your life. So faith comes by hearing the word of the heavenly form. That's how you get faith. 
by hearing the words of the heavenly Father. Let's go to Matthew 24 and 3. Matthew 24, verse 3. And as he said upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and which shall be the sign of thy coming, and of the end of the world? So, Yahweh Shah was asked by his disciples, how will we know when the end of the world is near? I mean, you got, um, you got um, false prophets putting out videos saying that we're not in the last days, all of this madness. Matthew 24 chapters let us know what the signs are. All you have to do is read this chapter and understand it. And all these things that has been mentioned there has come upon us. Has come upon us. There's only a few things that haven't happened and this word has not spread throughout the entire earth because Yahweh Shah said then the end. So I'm going to hit you with something sisters. Every time that you disobey your husband you're disobeying the heavenly father. I'm going to say that again. Every time that you disobey your husband, you're disobeying the heavenly father, the most high. You say, prove it, Tazadah. I'll prove it. I meant you, now I, don't, I don't mean that a man's telling you to do something crazy. See here, smoke this crap. I don't mean a foolish minded man. I mean a man that's in the spirit of truth. He's trying to live in accord to the um, Lord's statutes and commandments of this Bible, and he's giving you sound advice, and you don't listen, each time that you don't listen to him, you're disobeying the Most High. So let's get the divine order and prove that. The book of 1 Corinthians 11, verse 1. Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Yahweh Shah. So they're going to bother Paul. So, the Apostle Paul lets you know who he was a follower of. For all of you that want to say that Paul was a fake teacher, and no, he was a follower of Yahweh Shah. Many of you don't understand him because you don't link him to the thinking and mind of Yahweh Shah, the one that you um, confusingly call Jesus Christ. Verse 2 Now I praise you, brothers, that ye remember me in all things and keep the ordinance as I delivered them to you. Verse 3 But I will have you know that the head of every man is Yahweh Shah and the head of the woman is the man and the head of Yahweh Shah is Yahweh. So sisters, like it or not every organization who needs a ruler the man is to be the headship of that home. I didn't say he is to be a dictator. I didn't say he is to be a savage beast. Oh, you look, woman, I'm the man. I tell you what. No, brothers, it don't mean that. It means you are to give sound scriptural advice. The responsibility of that home falls back upon the man when he's in accord to, a, to the Most High. But the woman's out of order. Because why? The earth is out of order because the earth has been given into the hands of a wicked ruler. So it is with the woman. And let's read on. Let's get Isaiah 32, verse 9. All of you women that said, Oh, I don't need a man, I'm independent, Miss Independent. You see, all these women, uh, uh, I'm Miss Independent, I can do for myself. I got my degree. Sisters, you're going to need to get with a man. You're not going to enter this kingdom without a man. You say, prove it. I'm going to prove it. Let's prove it. Can a woman, let's see if a woman, uh, let's say a sister that's um, trying to live by the laws, is living right, and what have you, you know, she's not out committing adultery, will she enter the kingdom of the heavenly father? No, she won't. Your sister, you're going to need a man to get into this kingdom. I know you don't like it. Your preacher is not going to teach you this because he's not coming with truth. Sisters, you're going to have to get with a man. Your job, your nothing's going to save you. In fact, pretty soon your job's going to be gone. Esau's society is coming down. So let's prove it. Let's get the law on that. 
Let's go back to First Timothy, and let's see if you're going to need to get with a man, sisters, to to get salvation. I mean, a righteous man. I don't just mean um, a little um, Wayne or someone like that. You're going to have to be with a man that's into his world and coming with the truth and is in the right spirit. Book of Timothy, second chapter. Verse 14. For, let's start at verse 13. For Adam was first born, then Eve. Verse 14. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in transgression. So we see that it was the woman that made a covenant with Satan. She was in transgression of the Lord. And the man became weak to the woman, like many of you brothers are today. Verse 15. Now standing, she shall be saved in childbearing if they continue in faith and charity and holiness and sobriety. So sisters, bringing a child into this world is one of the sources of the heavenly father for giving you the covenant that Eve made with Satan. She shall be saved in childbearing. Esau might can go out and clone a kid but you can't have a child unless a man is in part of that relationship. So you're going to have to get with a man. Let's get Titus 2 and 3. Let's further prove this. Titus 2 and 3. We're going to go back there. We're going to get some understanding. Titus 2, verse 3. The aged women likewise, that they be in behavior, as become of holiness, not false accusers, not giving them too much wine, teaches of good things. So, even the aged women, in order for them to be wise, the wise man is supposed to teach it. Now let's go over to the book of Isaiah and continue to prove this. Isaiah. Um, Isaiah 32. Isaiah the 32nd chapter. We're going to start reading that verse 9. We're going to see if I'm going to show you your sister is going to have to get with a man. Isaiah 32. Rise up, ye women that are at ease. Hear my voice, ye careless daughters. Give ear unto my speech. Many of you sisters has been at ease. Because a black man, as you can see, there's more black women in the workplace than there are black men. Because a white man, if he has to employ a so-called minority, he's um, employing the so-called black woman. The black man, he's in jail, he's in prison, he's out on the corner, he's selling drugs. Now there's some sisters that do that, granted, but there's more black women in these colleges and universities than the black men, and they're giving her the jobs. So they've been at ease. But I'm going to hit you with something, sisters. All of that is about to disappear. All of that is about to disappear. Rise up, ye women that are at ease. Hear my voice, ye careless daughters, because you've been careless. Give ear unto my speech, verse 10. Many days and years shall ye be troubled, ye careless women. Because you've been careless, now this trouble is about to come your way. The American economy is finished. It's done. You're about to lose your job, and this wrath of the Howard is coming down. Ye careless women, for the vintage shall fall. All of your little precious diamonds and jewelry and your fancy clothes, what is the vintage? The vintage is the harvest that a former someone um, brings in. Your vintage is your little fancy clothing, your money that Esau gives you, your little diamond rings, your little necklaces, your ankle bracelets, all of this is going to start to um, fail. You're not going to have it anymore. Things are going to get so hard. For the vintage shall fall. The gathering shall not come. Your money's not going to be there anymore. You're going to lose that job. Esau is going to say, look, we don't have no job for you anymore. Verse 11. Tremble ye women that are at ease. It was at ease, sisters. Now, a lot of these jobs, the homosexuals are moving in. And they're taking over in the workplace. They're the CEOs. you got a lot of these homosexuals in um, prestigious positions. And they're not looking at you, so-called black women. They're looking at the black man because they want him. Yeah, you got lesbians there, but those homosexuals are more in power. And guess what, sisters? They're looking at your man. They're not looking at you. It's real. 
Be troubled, you careless ones. Strip ye and make ye bare, and great sackcloth, and gird sackcloth upon your loins. That means you're going to be covering your body, even your um, loins, your private parts, with riley clothing. You're not going to have your fancy clothing anymore. You're not going to be dressed up in your little two-piece suits, your tight jeans. Nope. You're not going to have that anymore, sisters. You're going to have to get with a man. We're going to get to that. Verse 12. They shall lament. Yeah, you're going to be crying because you're going to miss your vanities. For the teeth, for the pleasant fields, for the fruitful vine. Verse 13. Upon the land of my people shall come upon the thorns and briars. Yeah, upon all the house of joy and the joyous. Let's go over to Isaiah 32, verse 31. Behold, a king shall range in righteousness. This is talking about Yahweh Shah, a black revolutionary messiah that's going to come and bring about a destruction upon this earth. Sisters, for you to be saved, you're going to have to be with a man, a righteous man. Let's read. We're going to prove it in the second verse. In righteousness, and princes shall rule and judgment. That's talking about we Israel white man that's into this truth, that's teaching this truth sincerely from the heart. We're going to be princes and kings, ruling and righteous judgment. What kind of judgment? Righteous judgment. Verse two, and a man shall be a hiding place. I'm going to read that again. And a man shall be a hiding place from the wind. What is this wind? A thermonuclear destruction is like a world wind. It destroys everything animate within its path. So, a man, a righteous man, and let you know in verse 1 what kind of might, but man, but righteous, princes. Sisters, so, so you're going to have to get with a man to be saved from this. Verse 2 says, And a man shall be a hiding place from the wind, from this destruction. He's bringing about destruction like a whirlwind. Thermonuclear destruction. Yahweh Shah, black revolutionary Messiah. A so-called black man. Israelite, the real Jew. And a man shall be a hiding place from the wind and a cover it from the tempest. What is the tempest? A very strong storm with a tremendous wind. This is a man who's going to be a hiding place for that, sisters. As rivers of water in a dry place. A man is going to be as rivers of water in a dry place. Now let's examine that statement. As a man is going to be like water <coughs> when you're out in the dust, when there's no water around. So a man is going to be a necessity. What kind of man? A righteous, God-fearing man is going to be a necessity to make it when Yahweh brings about this destruction. <coughs> Excuse me, let's read on. As rivers of flowing water in a dry place, as the shadow of a great rock in the weary land. <coughs> so, sisters, you're going to have to get with a man. You're going to have to get with a man. You can like that, understand it, believe it or not, but the scriptures is very clear. <coughs> let's go to Isaiah 33, verse 6. <clears throat> Isaiah 33 and 6. And wisdom and knowledge shall be stability. <coughs> and wisdom and knowledge shall be stability of thy times. And strength of salvation. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. So you're going to have to get with a man that's knowledgeable in these scriptures. You're going to have to. You're going to have to, sisters. Let's get Revelations 18, verse 4. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, that ye receive not her place. So you got to come out of this white man's world, woman, and come back to your black man. It's the bottom line. You're going to have to get with a black man. And don't think Esau is going to save you. Esau is not going to be able to save you. He's going down. These heathens are going down. Now, sisters... We're still dealing with black male and female relationships. You're going to have to stop cross-dressing. Every time you sisters put on pants, you're cross-dressing. You're cross-dressing. Now, if a man walked outside with a dress on, 
Now, you will look at him and think something's wrong. But you put on pants. The law says that women breaches were designed for men. So all of you women out here, if you want to serve the Most High, guess what? You better stop wearing your tight jeans. You're cross-dressing. Let me get the law on that. Deuteronomy 22 and 5. Oh, I know you don't want to hear it, but you need to hear it. I know this is not the subject that you wanted to hear, um, black woman, but you need to hear it. Deuteronomy 22 and 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a uh, the woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all that do so are an abomination unto the Lord that power. An abomination is a filthy, wicked act. Something that is despised in the lies in the eyes of the heavenly Father. So let's get Exodus 28 and 42. Exodus 28 and 42. I'm going to show you that linen breaches with the design for the Levitical priesthood, who was men. Exodus 28 and 42. And thou shalt make them linen breeches to cover their nakedness, because from their loins even unto their thighs they shall reach. So all you men that wear your little short bikinis, your speedos, guess what? When you go out in the world like that on the beach, you ain't got no damn business at the beach anyway. Oh, you black men or black women. You're not supposed to be at the beach dressed new. Because when a man is not covered from his loins down to his thigh, the scripture classified you men as being naked. So all you damn men out there want to act like damn homosexuals in your speedos that have any father saying that you're naked. That's your nakedness. I'm going to read that again. And thou shalt make them linen breeches to cover their nakedness from their loins, your private parts, unto their thighs they shall reach. To cover their nakedness. So, from your loins to your thighs, man, is part of your nakedness. Anything shorter than that, you consider to be uncovering your nakedness. If you didn't know that scripture. Now you know the law. Go out and apply it to your life. So how should a woman dress? Let's get First Timothy 2 and 9. So you, you're not supposed to have on pants. How should a woman dress? First Timothy 2 verse 9. In like manner, so they're going to brother Paul. He said, in like manner, also, let the woman adorn themselves in modest apparel, with shamefacedness and all sobriety. So, your sister said, what is modest apparel? I got on a dress. Yeah, you put on a dress, but you make it exceedingly tight, showing every contour of your body. That's not modest apparel. That's gain sin, and that's coming with demons. And the heavenly fall is going to wash away you the filth of the daughters of Zion with the spirit of birth. Now let's read. In like manner also that the women adorn themselves in modest apparel or shame faces and severity, not with braided hair or gold or pearls or costly array. Meaning, you're not supposed to be out. I mean, you could beautify yourself before your husband, but you shouldn't be out in public flaunting yourself with all this flashy jewelry on with your braided hair, um, you know, and tip the men with your fancy hairstyles. Because some men are turned on about these things and it creates an attraction and it causes a problem in your own life. Even for your single women, that's not the way to attract women, to attract men with your tight jeans. That's the wrong way to get a man, sister. You're going to get the wrong kind of man. And many of you know this already from your experiences with men. Many of you got a lot of uh, Samsonite baggage in your closet. Now let's read on. Let's continue with the words of the Most High. So the Heavenly Father created the man to be the head of the woman. Let's get Romans 7 and 12. Romans 7 verse 12. Wherefore, the Lord is holy, and the commandments holy, and just, and good. So what makes a person holy, sister? This law. These law, statutes, and commandments of the heavenly form. That's what makes a person holy. The laws are not done away with. The law is holy. That what makes, that's what makes a person holy. Let's get Malachi 2 verse 7. Malachi, the second chapter, the seventh verse. So the law is what makes you holy, brothers and sisters.
For the priest's lips shall keep knowledge, and they shall seek the Lord at his mouth. For he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. So we men out here that's coming forward with the truth, sisters, that is what makes you holy. So if you want to be a smart mouth, but you want to run off at the mouth, you won't enter this kingdom, the heavenly form that he's established. And you could like to understand the believe it or not, but I'm reciting this from the scriptures verbatim. Let me get that again. Malachi 2 and 7. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge, and they should seek the Lord at his mouth. For he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. The Heavenly Father has selected his prophets to be men. And to be holy and sanctified by this word, you have to listen to the true prophets of the Heavenly Father. Let's go to 1 Peter 3 and 7. So, you see, you cannot do without your black man, black woman. You can't. You can't, you can't make it without your black man. 1 Peter 3 and 7. But the heavens and the earth which are now by the same word are kept in store, reserved until fire against the day of judgment and perdition of the ungodly men. And that's the meaning for women as well. I'm sorry, that's second Peter. But that that scripture is going to happen to men and women that's ungodly. What I've been looking for is first Peter. That's going to happen. To the ungodly men and women that don't want to hear this words. First Peter 3 verse 7. Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge, according to this word. We showed you what knowledge was. It's the word of the Holy Father. Likewise, ye men, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the woman, unto the wife, as a weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. So men that mistreat their wives, the Heavenly Father don't hear your prayers. In fact, the Most High don't hear the prayers of sinners. So if you're sinning, the Heavenly Father don't even hear your prayers. But your prayers are hindered, men, if you mistreat your wives. And He told you not to be a striker. You're not to beat your wife. So you dwell with them according to this law, statutes, and commandments of these Bibles. Not according to the world, man. Because if you was in compliance with this, the woman would be different. And we would be in harmony. And there would be love. And that perfect union that the Heavenly Father intended. But instead, what do we have? We have unclean women that's bringing forth bad seeds. So the scripture says that mistress and women shall bring forth monsters. Let's get that. Second Idris 5 and 8. Mistress and women shall bring forth monsters. Messages. Second interest, five and eight. There shall be a confusion also in many places, and the fire shall be offset out again, and the wild beasts shall change their places. And mistress women, meaning unclean women, when a woman is on her menstrual cycle, she's considered to be unclean. So this is the heavenly father's way of saying unclean women. Mistress women shall bring forth monsters. It's talking about these gang bangers. These brothers and sisters out here just killing up each other. It's talking about you um, thug, living a thug life, killing your own cup. Mistress women shall bring forth monsters. That's talking about these stick up kids that go out and snatch a purse from the elderly and hit them in the head. That's talking about these little 12 year olds that shoot another 11, 12, a 7 year old down in the street. Mistress women shall bring forth monsters. Unclean women shall bring forth monsters. Because they are the product of their environment. Let's get Isaiah 3 verse 12. We're going to close this out pretty soon. Isaiah 3 and 12. As for my people, children are the oppressors. And women rule over them. So there it is. The order has been switched. Part of our curse was these women ruling over us. O oh, my people, he's talking to the nation of Israel, they which lead thee cause thee to err and destroy the way of thy path. All you men, 
that's allowing a woman to rule, set that house in order. All of you men that's allowing a woman to rule, set that house in order. The only way you're going to be able to do that is if you turn to these laws, statutes, and commandments. That doesn't mean with your fist. It's not how the heavenly father is telling you to rule, man. You rule with your mind. With your with being in the correct spirit. Not with an iron fist. Currently, 70% of the so-called black women are single. 70%. While on the flip side, 70 to 80% of so-called black men are in prison or haven't been in jail at least once or twice in their lives. So, mistress women, unclean women, with no guidance, has brought forth even wicked children. You brought forth even wicked, even children that's even more wicked. So, righteous women, to all these sisters that like to use the phrase, well, that most high knows what's in my heart, God knows what's in my heart. No. A woman of God is not going to be adorned in the attire of a heart. A woman of God is not going to walk around dressed like a whore. That means something is wrong with your spirit sister, and you need to check yourself, because that's the wrong spirit. A wicked woman dresses like a harlot, smelling in men's faces, letting men touch on them, hugging men, embracing them, kissing them on the cheek. All of that stuff is of the world. That is not of our nation. That is not of the nation of Israel. And so it is with the mother, you're going to produce little black daughters the same exact manner. In fact, let's get that scripture. Let's get Ezekiel. Ezekiel 40, Ezekiel 16, verse 44. So if you're like that, sisters, you're going to produce the same kind of little black girls. Ezekiel 16, verse 44. Behold, every one that useth the Proverbs shall use this proverb against the sin. As the mother, so is the daughter. So if you run, if you walk around in your tight jeans with your um, cleavage out, so will your daughter be like that? Ninety-nine point nine percent, your daughter's gonna turn out like that. There is a very small increment that slips through the cracks, but ninety-nine point nine percent is gonna follow your example. It's gonna follow your example, and that is not of this nation. According to the Bible. And brothers, to all of you that's complaining about your women being bad, oh, she's, she's no good, she's no good, she's like this. I want you to consider this scripture. Ecclesiasticus, in the Holy Apocrypha, the 26th chapter, verse 23. Ecclesiasticus 26 and 23. A wicked woman is given as a portion to a wicked man. So, brothers, if you have a wicked woman, guess what? That means you need to check yourself. But a godly woman is given to him that feareth the Lord. So, a wicked woman is given to a wicked man. This is not just by chance. Oh, what, brother? You thought you was righteous and the Most High just gave you a wicked woman? No, you need to look into the mirror of truth and develop into yourself and correct the wrongs in you. You got to return to these laws, statutes, and commandments of the laws of the Most High. There's no other way around. There's no other way around. So, with that, brothers and sisters, black men and black women need to come together and learn to live in harmony according to this truth that the Heavenly Father has prescribed for us. This is your medicine. This holy bite. It's a song that my grandfather used to sing. Heaven, heaven. Heaven. Everybody's talking about heaven. But everybody's talking about heaven. is not going there. Unless you return to these laws, statutes, and commandments. And live them according to this Bible. Not how your fake preacher has taught you. But according to how this Bible. You're not going there. So-called white people, I would like to ask you a question. 
How can you talk about God blessing America or going to heaven when for over 400 years you rape, rob, and murder the people? It's to this day and time, you got your wicked police officers that stick plungers up of a black man and wrecked him. You shoot him down in the street 41 times. And you talking about heaven? You lynch a man in a minute. And you talking about heaven? They still dragging black men behind trucks in Jasper, Texas. And down in Texas. And you people are talking about heaven? You say, well, that's not our whole race. But the children of the former slave masters was different. If you was in a different spirit, you would say, well, our forefathers was wrong, so what they had done. We're going to reparate you from all of these wrongs that our forefathers has done. We're going to give you this land. Since you have built this country, the vast majority of it, with your slave labor, we're going to take these states and give them to you. But you can't do that because you're of your father, the devil. 